This video is made for anyone who's working hard to become a UX designer. Today, I will show you how to build a UX case study in a UX portfolio. I'm Aliena, I'm a self-taught UX designer, and welcome back to my channel! This video is the second part of my previous video on UX case study, so if you haven't checked that out, please do that first. First of all, I think writing up a case study in a UX portfolio is super duper difficult. At least in my case, I finished this project a while ago, and now I need to revisit every single design file and package this entire process as definitely not perfect into something presentable and professional. And that takes hundreds of hours and a lot of cups of coffee and good music. So I understand how difficult and also ambiguous this entire process is. Today I'm just going to show you my process and my tips of building up a case study. So let's jump right into my step-by-step -step process. Let's start with the first step. The first step is to revisit all your design files and reorganize them. So go check your Figma, go check your folder, pull up everything and put them into one place. Please read through everything you've written. You might see a lot of work that you already forgot about. When it comes to our first few projects, we often make the not mistake. It's just like the organization of the entire design file is usually pretty messy. So what I suggest you to do is to organize the file, use arrows to connect those user flows. Another thing that you can do is to use this kind of rectangular shape blocking the top of some screens and give it a name so that it groups all the user flow. And please make sure the space between each screen is the same. This will really, really help you in the later phase when you have to screenshot everything and put it into the portfolio. The second step is to write the structure of your case study. Let's just start with titles and headings. There's a lot of things to include in a case study, but please don't just throw them all there. Instead, make sure to pick the ones that you've done well, or make sure to pick the one that's important for storytelling or for showcasing your problem-solving ability. And here's a little chart that I made. These are things that you can include. These can be the titles of each of your paragraph or each of the sections, um, just as a recommendation. And my tip of building up a great structure for a case study is to really, really focusing on the opening, the ending, and just make one part in the middle of the entire case study really pop up. So what I usually will do is start with problem and solution statement in the beginning, my impact project success or what I learned in the end, and then a part where I highlight the design iteration in the middle. And for both the opening, the ending, and that part I want to highlight in the middle, I will make sure to create a really good visualization to highlight those. Well, okay, that's the second step. The third step is to build design assets for the case study. Take a look at your structure again, wherever it says this part needs a realization, make sure you have that realization, make sure everything's in the same style. And if we are missing some of the step like information architecture, or if we don't have this user journey map here, what we can do is just like quit that now. My biggest tip for you guys is to go to Figma community page. For whatever the asset you don't have, there's usually always a great template to use. Some other great design assets to build in this step is those banners or realizations that you want to showcase. So throwing some random tips, go to Figma community file and search mockups. Also go to Dribbble to look for some design inspirations and design a few options to use for the banner. And again, those won't be perfect when you put into the website because you always need to iterate to make a great visual. The fourth step is to write out the paragraphs. For the beginning, what I did is a summary paragraph following by problem statement and the solution statement. Here's the tricky thing. For us UXers, we have a certain template to write problem statement. But in this case, I suggest you to write a problem statement that's like a combination of a business problem statement plus a product problem statement. Because the people who will be reading your portfolio are the recruiters and hiring managers. And they want to see whether you can actually contribute to their business. I'll give you an example. It's kind of like packaging yourself as a hero. A problem statement can be, this company sells second-hand clothing and it has a large user base, however, their website is outdated and the outdated design does not align with the internet usage of Gen Z audience. And the solution statement can be like, during my four months working as a UI UX design contractor at this company, I redesigned their company website to make it fit the expectation of Gen Z audience through three rounds of wireframing, prototyping, and user testing. I delivered a full set of UI UX design together with an expandable design system. My design led to a 10K user increase and 15% improvement on user satisfaction rate. Something like that. Their product sucks, I saved the day. 
Now let's go to this final step, which is how to put this entire thing into a freaking website. But before that, let me introduce you to today's sponsor, Springboard. Springboard is an online UI UX design bootcamp of six to nine month online learning in your flexible pace, where you can also have one-on-one -on -one mentorship, plus a 40 hour industrial standard design project. Now, I personally didn't really go through a design bootcamp while I was learning UX design. And the biggest challenge that I faced is that I didn't have real life project. So it's hard for me to tell the story of how I saved the day in the business. And I think one of the most crucial thing to showcase in your portfolio is that you've solved actual business problem and you've helped actual users. And that's why I think if you are still working hard to become a UX designer, but you don't have UX project, I would suggest you to go to a design bootcamp. Another thing that Springboard offer is that they guarantee you have a job after six months of graduation. And if you didn't get a job, you get your money back. So if you want to take the Springboard design bootcamp, please make sure to use my code. Aliena time because it will save you a thousand dollar. Okay, now let me show you how exactly to put all these things that we prepared into an actual website. Today I'm going to use Squarespace, but you can use any website design builder you want. The philosophy is the same. So if you don't know how to build out this homepage, please check out my previous video. On Squarespace, what you need to do to create a page is to click not linked plus and then click blank page. I will name it with the project name, so keys app. Now double click empty page, add section, and let's choose add blank. When you're in the section, there's usually an empty text box, so you just need to find it somewhere, and here we go, text. So what I'm going to do now is to copy everything I prepared and paste everything here. Don't worry about structure, just paste everything here. And as you can see, it looked really bad. <laughs> so now let's decide the font size of each paragraph in each title. Currently it's heading 2, but I think it looks better as heading 4. And I'm going to bold all the title and delete all the empty paragraphs in between and do that for the rest. We are done, click done and save. The second step we're going to do is to add all the visuals to our portfolio. For example, on the top, I said great visual banner on top, need banner. <laughs> in my design file, I've laid out everything like this. In presentation page, I've tried a few versions of the good banners I think that might fit the page. I will go with this version for the banner on top, export it as JPG, and then let's go back to our Squarespace, add section on top, and use a template that has full width image, such as this one. Delete all the text. Delete all the button. Click edit section, this icon here. Click background. Delete the current background and upload what we exported here. In Squarespace, they also provide you an overlay opacity and please turn that to zero. Now we can see we have a banner on top. In order to make the height of this banner higher or smaller, what we can do is to click somewhere until you see the plus sign, click spacer, and edit the width of the spacer. This looks good to me, and click save. When I was preparing my case study, I put everything that I need a visual with a bracket, so I'm just going to replace everything with a bracket with a visual. For example, here there's process, and I will go back to my Figma, look at the process that I designed and export it to a really high resolution and place it back. The way to add an image between tags in Squarespace is simply to click this plus sign in between and then click image. And then you can drag the image that you downloaded here. Great. Delete the tags. I'll do the same for the rest. For this section named after design changes, I made a few assets to present before and after regarding how I make certain design decision. And it's here in the process. I think the way I did it is pretty simple. It's just left and right and separated by a line. But you can do something definitely better than this.
when you have certain link that you want to include, click the add icon, click button, and then replace the tag to something like view prototype and paste the link of your prototype here. If you want to place an image in between tags that take up the whole space and don't have any margin on the side, what you need to do is to add section at the bottom, click a section that allows you to have full width image, delete all the text, click edit, click background, delete this one and put back what I want here. Change the overlay opacity to 0% so that you can show the full image. You can use a spacer to edit the height of this section. If you want to have text below it, you need to add another section. Add blank. First, cut off the text above it that you want to move below it. And paste the text here. Yeah, that's the way to go. Now let's click done and save. Now what I've built out is a website that has all my design assets, but horrible spacing and look. The next step I'm going to do is to definitely clean up this thing. I will double click it, click add button at top, and then add a lot of spacers. I move one of the spacer to the left, and then one of the spacer to the right. And then I will narrow the spacer. You can see that there's different stopping point. And I will calculate and make sure I'm at the second stopping point. Same on the left and same on the right. Now what this does is that it gives a little bit more space for text. And it emphasizes the image because the image width is now larger. When it comes to this section, I really want it to be side by side. So first I will bold some of the things that I want, my rule, collaboration, platform. And now because it's in the same text box, I need to first break it up into different text box. So what I do is just to give random line in between first. And if you add a line in between text box, what you did is that you just break that into different elements. And the spacing just never worked the way you want. It's okay. Now I can drag this text box to the right here. And you need to really wait until this precise line show up. Here. Same. Now let me adjust it so everything take up the same space. And I will delete all the extra line. Ta-da! And for the paragraph that goes immediately after it, I always make sure to give it extra space in between. This will make the page look not so dense. And also it really works well on the mobile version. For this kind of process, I can make a decision whether make it smaller like this or bigger like this. Or I can also adjust the space again by adding another two spacer. One put it to the left one put to the right and make it to the first stopping point. And now that I've finished adding the spacing for the entire page, I want to preview the page. Let's click down. Let's click the arrow on the top right. In this way, we can view how the entire page looked like. And I can see a few problems here. So let's click the arrow again. Let's click edit. If you feel like a certain image is a little bit too big or too small, you can adjust the spacing again to make it fit. Now, what I will do is add animation to a lot of images. For persona, let's click edit. Let's click design. And then let's click animation. I will use tilt up. What this does is that when somebody comes to your website and when they scroll down, your image doesn't just appear there. They will have an animation and feel like they are floating up to appear. Now what we need to do is go to home page. Click edit. 
go to content and go to link. Let's click the citing icon here and click search and click keys app, the project you've done and click save. What we just did is that whenever people come to our homepage and click on this image, they will go to the project and click save. Now let's preview our portfolio again. If you forget the link of your portfolio, go to settings, go to domains and here. This will be the link to your portfolio. Here we go. And as you can see, when my cursor go to this image, it will appear to be the pointing button. If we click it, it will take me to this page. And if we scroll down, we can see that image is going to float up. I think what they call it is tilt up. I don't know. Some will not because I didn't put animation on all of them. And there's design changes, design system, high for the prototype. Oh, uh, I will definitely change that later. <laughs> there's a weird text here. And that's it for today's video. I hope this is helpful. It took me a long time to create this video because I cannot really showcase what I actually did in my past work. So I have to build up this case out of the blue, like this keys case study is something I designed just for this video. <laughs> and yeah, that's why it took me so long. If you want to see something specific from my channel, just comment, comment, comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to check out Springboard, don't forget to use my code Alienatsai to get a thousand dollar off. And finally, have a great day and I will see you next time. Cheers.